the, mo the method that, or the approach that we took was what we call a semi-continuous monitoring approach. We had two instrument trailers, and each instrument trailer then rotated between two barns. We would take these trailers, a trailer, to a site, set it up, and then continuously monitor there for a month. And then we'd pack it up, take it to the next site, monitor there for a month. So over the course of two years, each trailer spent about eight months at each site. The, the trailers were really the heart and brains of our monitoring. They held the equipment, gas sampling system, all our analyzers, and on some uh, really long days, the technicians. And everything basically fed into these trailers. And then we um, moved the trailers, of course, each month. Now going into this, um, we started out with some assumptions. And I, I do want to take a little bit of time to talk about the, the mechanics between the airflow, concentration, and emission in these barns, what we started out with and where we ended up with. Our initial assumptions that were, were that for a, a self win, and I apologize that not, it's not coming through very clearly, there should be a roof right there. Uh, for a self wind, meaning the wind blowing from the south to the north, we would have airflow through the south wall opening and the north wall opening. Now, if we assume constant air density, easy way to think about that is that temperature being consistent through that barn, the airflow that enters into this south wall should be equal to the airflow that exits out that wall. Now, this is a much larger opening, so as it goes through a smaller opening, that airspeed would have to be increased for that to happen. But this was our assumption going in, and that, of course, if it reversed, if we had a north wind, so would the airflow direction to those openings. Along with those airflow assumptions, we had some assumptions on the concentration and emissions from these barns. Well, first of all, we need to recognize that there is some gas in our, in our background there. For some gases, it's very little, and some gases, it's a little bit higher. But we have a concentration of gases, or dust for that matter, in this inlet air. So that air flows into the barn, and then what's produced by the animals, what's produced by the bedding, or in the building itself, it adds to that air in that building. And then that more concentrated air then leaves the facility. And so this is what would happen for a self wind condition, theoretically. The concentration in this barn, or even the concentrations that we measure here, they're an indication of air quality. Our emission, though, is when we take the airflow through these openings, and these are the same if we would just take the airflow through the south opening, for example, and we would time multiply that by that difference in concentration between the outlet and inlet. That gives us emission. That gives us net emission. What is produced in the barn? <coughs> With our basic assumptions between, behind this, everything would reverse for an ornament. So with that, those theoretical considerations in mind, this is how we approached our monitoring. We set up our gas sampling probes and our environmental sensors in the openings of these barns on the north side and the south side. We monitored a lot of different gases. Uh, but we're, what we're going to focus on today is ammonia and hydrogen sulfide, because that really pertains to some of the, and us, I should say, because that really pertains to um, some of our future discussions here this morning. Particulate matter is sampled a little bit differently than gases. With gases, we would pull the, the gas through a tube and, and analyze what's in that air. For dust, what our approach to monitoring dust in this study was we set out some analyzers and basically you measure how much dust accumulates on a filter over time. We looked at a couple different sizes of dust. So you're going to hear us refer to TSP. That's total suspended particulate. That's all of the particulate matter that's suspended in air. We also looked at what's called PM10. And that's particulate matter that has a particle diameter less than 10 microns. Just to put that into perspective, a human hair is about 70 microns. So we're talking about particles that are a seventh of a size of a human hair. So we're looking at the amount of that size of particle that's accumulating over time. And similarly, PM 2.5, that's particulate matter less than two and a half pine parts. Now we, we did monitor dust at our at our pack bar, at a pack system and then at our scrape systems. At our scrape systems, our measurements were 24 hours um, over about a course of a year, periodic measurements. Really helped us establish the baseline information. At the pack systems, however, we made a more concentrated effort to evaluate how the concentration of dust changes between a bedding event and just a routine operation. So to go along with all our data from in the barn and uh, on the perimeter of the barn, we 
We also then monitor the weather. We monitor the weather on site using some weather stations, temperature, relative humidity, and then of course, uh, wind speed and direction. So that's a, that's a lot of information coming in. I want to give you a snapshot of, of how it looks and how it kind of comes together to get to a mission. This is an example, a 24 hour snapshot of airflow data. And now I wouldn't get too hung up on, on the values here, but these positive numbers, in this case, that indicates a north wind. And this um, negative airflow, that just means that it's uh, a south wind. So when it's a north wind, wind is uh, coming into the north, the north wall is our inlet, essentially, and our south wall is the outlet. So when we looked at the concentration data for that corresponding period, what we see is that when we look at the concentration we measured on the north wall and the concentration we measured on the south wall, they also changed in terms of magnitude, which was really good. <laughs> Luckily, our, our basic assumptions were holding true. So as we had uh, a north wind, our south wall had the higher concentrations, and when we had when the wind reverse direction, so did our concentration. When we talk from an air quality perspective, and that's you know the, that's the environment that our that the cattle um, workers our cells are, are exposed to. The numbers that we're looking at are these maximums here, sort of our exhaust concentrations from these barns. But when we take those airflow numbers and the concentration numbers together, that's what gives us emission. The multiplication of this airflow and this difference in concentration gives us ammonia emission. And what I wanted to just point out for this 24 hour period, despite our changing airflow direction and despite some changing levels of concentration, our emission was relatively stable through that process, right? So it gave us some, some confidence that we were on the right track. But we still went back and looked at those assumptions we had made. One of the things we noticed that was that in this south wall, those airflow measurements tended to be tended to be higher and a lot more variable than those measurements in the north wall. Well, part of this basic assumption was that by monitoring the airspeed at one spot, that was representative of what was going in through that whole opening. Now, we have watched um, what happens in that south wall opening during a windstorm or a snowstorm. You know that wind is blowing in all sorts of different directions, right? And we did uh, some, some very basic monitoring too that proved uh, how variable it was based on height. And that also at times there was even airflow coming out of the barn when it should have been going in based on the wind direction. And so what we've decided that going forward, um, or our new assumption, is that this north wall opening measurement is a better representative representation of the airflow that's going through these barns, picking up the pollutants and contributing to emissions. Now with those, you know, what we noticed in terms of airflow in that south wall, we then looked at our concentration and emission data. Again, what we, tend, what we noticed is that this concentration in this south wall tended to be higher than what we thought it was. Now it's kind of like, kind of like cattle, right? You can't go and ask them a question directly, but you can look for signs. And it's the same with data. We can't, can't always tell us exactly what it, what's going on, but we can look for signs based on our experience. And so we noticed this was a little bit higher than we, we thought it should be for, uh, for, that, for whatever condition as an inlet or an outlet. So what we think is happening is that because of some of that reverse and backdraft flow in this south wall, that, this, uh, that the gas and dust that's being produced in this building is somewhat creating a bit of a, a bubble inside that hole. So our inlet measurement is not quite as um, exact as we'd like to, like to be. So what does that mean? Well, when it comes to a net emission calculation, we are looking at the difference between this and this. And if this inlet measurement is higher than it should be, that's going to gonna bias our emission measurements lower. Now, that's, that's for net emission. We can also look at a gross emission calculation. And that's simply what's leaving the barn times that, that airflow. If there really isn't a whole lot of gas or dust in our, in our inlet air, you know, that's not such a big, big assumption. So what we um, looked at going forward is that our average daily mean emission rate, you know, our average emission rate from these barns is going to be between our gross emission rate and our net emission rate. And again, we just consider that the airflow direction is 